Hey folks, uh, welcome to the podcast. Today I had a chat with a guy called Thomas Hosler. It was actually Dr. Thomas Hosler, who's a lecturer and researcher at Manchester Metropolitan University. And we talked about ASMR. So for those that don't know, it's an autonomous sensory meridian response, which is that little tingle, tingling sensation you get at the back of your head in response to certain stimuli like sounds and all of that stuff so really interesting and very popular on youtube so we talked about what it is uh what research has been going on uh, how it benefits people advertising and so forth so i hope you enjoy it hey it's lewis welcome to the podcast enjoy our conversations anytime anywhere Cool, and we're live. Thanks for coming down to see me. No problem. So you came down from Manchester? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, what is your background? I'm a lecturer in psychology at Manchester Metropolitan University, MMU. Been there for a couple of years. Before that, I did a PhD in psychology at the University of Sheffield, and then before that, undergrad degree in psychology at Leeds. Nice, nice. So you've always, you always wanted to be academic, research... I think pretty much, yeah. My both my parents are academics. Uh, okay. Um, I think after I did my undergrad degree, I wasn't. I took a year out to just you know chill out, try a few things, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then sort of decided I want to get back into it. So nice, nice. And so, what research do you do? What are you covering? So at the minute, various things. Most of it at the minute, I'm doing on ASMR. Some stuff on mixed emotions as well. Some stuff on my PhD was in uh, prospective memory, which is um, so like how people remember how to do things in the future or like when to do things in the future. Oh, okay, brilliant, um, brilliant. Yeah, and then and then it migrated then to ASMR. Well, the ASMR sort of came out of, of nowhere, to be honest. Um, it might be just be worth telling people what ASMR is yeah, and what okay. it stands for. So just get, give some context. So ASMR stands for uh, Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And it's, uh, the, I guess the phrase itself actually refers to the feeling or the sensation, which is a kind of pleasant tingling sensation. So it starts usually starts at the top of your head and kind of goes down your, your neck and shoulders. Kind of similar to goosebumps, I guess, but subtly different. Okay. Uh, and quite a pleasant sensation. And people get this in response to triggers such as people whispering, people talking very softly and kind of enunciating the <laughs> words that they say. And there's also sort of a, an element of this kind of close personal attention, I guess. So, like, people often get it when, say, uh, someone's giving them a haircut or things like, you know, you, like, arrive at a hotel or something and the receptionist is like, okay, so what, what room number was it? Oh, just yeah, get yeah. booking up. And they're kind of, you know, <laughs> nice giving space. you this kind of expert personal attention. Yeah, yeah. And these triggers trigger this this feeling called ASMR. Interesting. And it could, could it could be other things... Um, visual as well as auditory yeah so i guess it's a combination of all those of of those things right so the the auditory yeah seems to be something to do with like the whispering and the the particular kind of crisp sounds so as well as people enunciating their words like that um you can trigger it through kind of crisp sounds like tapping fingernails okay um people kind of running their hand along a comb where it goes yeah yeah Hair, um, like, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then I guess the the, the personal attention expert thing, um, people doing very expert things with their hands, say like uh, you know modelling something or crafting something or oh wow that that's visual that's really visual yeah but I, I guess you know it's all it comes as a package I guess so it's all these things sort of together yeah yeah so you know it's not just oh anytime someone whispers you get SMR or any time you hear tapping or see someone doing something. It's, it seems to be like this interplay between all these different... So there's uh, a factors. trigger and then you have this ASMR response. Yeah, and you get, yeah. you get ASMR. And so how did you arrive at researching this and how did it become a well, topic so, of interest? So it was when I was doing my PhD in Sheffield, which is on was on yeah, something completely different, really, you know, memory. And um, I was out with some fellow PhD students... And these are the ones who I've worked on the paper that we published with. Uh, Julia Puerio, 
Emma Blakey and Teresa Veltri. And Jules, I think, you know, came up to me. We were out with the PhD student. She was like, oh, Tom, have you, you know, this is going to sound weird, but have you ever heard of ASMR? And I said, no, <laughs> you know. But then when she described that sensation to me, you know, oh, well, you know, do you ever get this kind of tingling feeling when you hear, you know, when someone gives you a haircut away, you know? And I was like, oh, yeah, like, I do. I, well, you know, not that often, but definitely when I was a kid more as well. I was like, oh, yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't think anyone else... In the, you know, so it's an actual thing that. that you are really conscious that you, you, you got? I think, I think you yeah. would know if you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's sort of different degrees to the extent that people get it, but it seems to be some people get it and some people don't. Um, and interestingly, that, that reaction that I had of, oh, I didn't think anyone else get you know got this, is quite common. And, and it seems to be when you tell people about it, either they think, oh, I thought I was the only person in the world who got that, or they think, oh, yeah, you know, doesn't everyone get that? Um, yeah, yeah. There's quite a lot of scepticism there as well. Yeah. There seems to be. I, I guess that's from the people who, who don't get it. Just do it, yeah. And, but, but when, she, anyway, when Jules mentioned this to me, she, she said, oh, you know, have you heard of it? And I was like, no. She said, oh, well, we want to do, you know, I want to do a piece of research into it. And actually, at, at that time, it was still sort of, I guess, like an underground internet subculture, uh, especially in the last couple of years. It's kind of almost gone mainstream. Um, but there was no, I think there was one kind of scientific paper published on it, but very like under research. Yeah. So we were like, oh, yeah, yeah you perfect. Know, it's kind of a good opportunity to yeah. do something really interesting and novel. Amazing. And so, um, and so this was what, like five years ago or so? Or? Yeah, this must, yeah. Four or five. Fine. And then so you, you joined Manchester, met, and then started your research there? Or? Yeah, so we, we did, me, Jules kind of led the project, uh, and then me, her, Emma and Teresa kind of did this piece of research into ASMR, sort of in our spare time when we were PhD students in China. Oh, oh, okay, fine, right. Uh, and got that published. And then since I've become a lecturer, yeah. I guess I'm paid to do. That's perfect, pretty perfect. Good, so. Great. So what have you actually researched to date and... What are you currently doing on it? So the, f the first paper that was published on ASMR, not by us, although actually by one of my colleagues at MMU, Nick, Nick Davis and Emma Barrett, they just did a basic kind of survey into people who watched ASMR videos. You know, sort of what does it feel like? Why do you watch them? Uh, what are the kind of things that trigger your ASMR? So what we wanted to do is see you know but there was inevitably some skepticism sort of around it saying well you know how do you know if people say oh I get this tingling feeling or feel relaxed you know how do you know they actually are feeling that yeah, yeah. so we uh, wanted to do an experiment where we actually got people sort of into the lab um, got them to watch an ASMR video or a few videos and then measured their physiological responses so heart rate breathing rate skin conductance which is the sort of kind of sweaty palms yeah, feeling yeah. yeah and these are all measures of you know general physiological arousal and we found that the people who got asmr when they were watching the asmr videos they showed larger decreases in heart rate and increases in skin conductance than the people who didn't get asmr interesting so this sort of shows i guess that it's somewhat of a, like it is a real thing in terms of people are reporting feeling different but there's actually that you know their physiological measures are, are showing that something is actually happening as well. And and then did you also show them non SMR videos and measures? Yeah, as like a control condition. Yeah. yeah. So it was yeah. only that it was only the ASMR people uh, people who got ASMR who watched ASMR videos that showed the biggest decreases. Okay, fine. And then people who said they didn't get SMR ASMR they also didn't get it when they were watching. No, I think, I mean, I think they decrease slightly, but, yeah. you know, there's obviously going to be some effect of just sitting quietly in a room watching a kind of relaxing video. Yeah. But, the, you know, the people who reported actually getting the tingling sensation showed bigger decreases as well. Great. So, so that, and so you, you, re, you, re, you released that paper to say that there were yeah, physical... Yeah, we published that last August. And that was your first paper on, on ASMR yeah. that you published? Yeah. Great. And where's it going to now? So you've you kind of, is it accepted now that 
ASMR is a I, thing? Well, or, I guess or like, there's, there's more evidence to it and there's more people who are researching it now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, compared to... There's probably a dozen, maybe less, like, papers published on it. So yeah. it's still not necessary. You know, you sort of need a, a large body of evidence to yeah. really kind of prove that something exists. Yeah. Um, but there just seem to be more people, you know, researching it and publishing on it. Uh, which is quite exciting, obviously, and sort of. I guess yeah. it's a snowball effect. Like the more, the more that you gets out there, the more other people get interested in it. Definitely, and, and increases. So, so. so, but you've kind of established um, a measurable effect on the body. Yeah, from yeah. that. And do do you know what what happens? So what's actually happening in the brain that causes well, that not, response? Well, not really. No, um, you know, that's that's one of the most interesting questions. Really, is sort of why. So, you know, what what does it happen? Um, there's some interesting stuff about, um, you know, other kind of forms of tingling, uh, which is to do with um, your, your sort of brain's attention on its own uh, interoceptive signals. So, like, your, your brain is constantly getting information from inside your body about sort of what's happening, but usually it's not, um, you know, you're not consciously aware of it. So there's a theory that tingling is some some way of uh, when your brain kind of becomes uh, puts its attention on these signals in a particular way that's when you experience tingling so can you can you make yourself do that um, so interestingly there seems to be a sort of subset of people who can deliberately trigger like ASMR without any external influence wow. they can kind of make themselves tingle um, but and, and that's measurable like they ha- well, we're not sure how to measure that. I guess. <laughs> right, right, we, right. We, that's not something we've looked at specifically. Um, but there, your people self-report a subset of people self-report being able to do that, which is quite interesting. They're no, very. Yeah, our mind's powerful. Yeah, super powerful. And it, and this is is this so ASMR it regarded as as a therapeutic therapeutic. Um. Like so this this is almost where the, you know, you have to get the definition straight because yeah. ASMR itself refers to the feeling, right? And this can be caused by any sort of everyday instances of people like that was an example of a receptionist checking you in or going to get a haircut. But it's really kind of come to the public consciousness through the, the YouTube videos, right? The ASMR videos. They get mil- like millions yeah. and millions. So basically what sort of happened is that when people started to st- started initially talking about this feeling online there was a blog post called the unnamed feeling where someone said you know oh i get this weird tingling sensation when in certain circumstances and other people like, oh i get this as well <laughs> and they gave it a name asmr yeah and when when was this how long ago this must have been about 2009 okay. i think yeah um but so once it had a name you could talk about it with other people and then people like well hang on a sec you know maybe we could people go oh when I watch this particular YouTube video I get the sensation as well and there's examples of of stuff going back to like the 80s like the Bob Ross videos and I don't know them Uh, okay so uh, this guy called Bob Ross who did a a sort of how to paint series okay in like the thing the late 80s early 90s and sort of purely by chance um his videos are really ASMR triggering because he's got this kind of quite soft voice and um you can hear the kind of scratching sounds of his paintbrush on the canvas yeah. and there's loads of ASMR triggers in there and people sort of saying oh when I watch this video it gives me ASMR so then the next logical step is well you could deliberately make videos to trigger ASMR by putting all these triggers in them ah, okay um, and they're the things that have become really popular and then from that people have said well I don't just watch these videos because it sort of feels nice but because I've, you know, people find that it helps decrease their symptoms of depression and anxiety and helps them relax. And in particular, sort of really interesting when it helps people get to sleep. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the idea of the therapeutic thing comes in because people oh. are saying, well, yeah, are we using these videos for that purpose? Yeah, I spoke, I spoke to, um, when, I, when we'd uh, agreed to do this, I spoke to a few people about ASMR <laughs> Because I hadn't really, I didn't know much about it, and if, and and both people I spoke to were like, oh my god, um, 
I have insomnia. Yeah. And the only thing that gets me to sleep is watching ASMR videos. Yeah. And I had no idea. People didn't talk about it, you know. No, not It's really. not something you like go down the pub and you're like, hey, guess what? Um, and so then you start speaking to people more about it and you start looking at the videos and yeah. it's, it's interesting. It seems to really work. Well, that's the thing, right? You know, it's not just a kind of, it's, it's interesting to, you know, do research on it purely from a, it's a weird sensation sort of angle. But also there's this whole thing, well, actually, loads of people are using it for this purpose. And I mean, there's arguably a lot more unhealthier ways, you know, to help yourself get to sleep. If you're well, if you're not yeah. drinking drugs and stuff like that. So in that respect, if it works, then, you know, it could be a... a no, it's powerful. I mean, you're using your, your mind or stimuli to stimulate some parts of your brain. Yeah. I guess. And, I mean, to... and all you need is a, you know, a, a YouTube account, right? Or like, you know, <laughs> yeah. something you can watch YouTube videos. Wow, technology is working again. Yeah. Crazy. The interesting thing, and, and I don't know if you're starting to research it, is that actually what, how does it work? And what parts of the brain? Yeah. Why does it have that effect? Yeah. I mean, there's a few theories. There's like, um, there's one theory that it's sort of something to do with, um, like from evolutionary psychology, like a grooming thing. What do you mean? So you know, like how, um, you know, chimpanzees uh, groom each other for oh, you know, lice yeah. and parasites and stuff. Um, you know, there's a theory that, well, maybe ASMR is almost like a kind of uh, uh, evolutionary kind of hangover from that, because presumably, you know, if you get this kind of pleasurable sensation from kind of being groomed, that would be a incentive to, to do it and to do it to other people as well. So, yeah. so that's one interesting kind of idea behind it. Um, another bit of research that started to go on is looking at um, ASMR and uh, misophonia. What's that? So misophonia, it's a similar thing, but it's when you really hate certain sounds. Oh, like scratching um, like chalk on the board and so, nails or so something? So more like eating sounds. So, oh, okay. so, so some people, the sound of other people eating drives them crazy like you know you might say well it's not pleasant people chewing with their mouth open but some people it really really drives them crazy like to the point where you know they almost get like shaking with anger and have to leave the room um and this is called misophonia and you know there was an original idea that well, maybe asmr is like the opposite of misophonia if some All people right. get a pleasant tingling sensation from it and some people get a um you know a horrible sensation from it but then this the, this recent research, which has found that people who get ASMR also tend to get misophonia. Oh wow! So maybe it's something actually to do with a more general kind of sensitivity to sound that is like stimulating, you know, different parts of the brain. Interesting if this is developed over time or if it's kind of genetic yeah. or mixture of both. Yeah, it's hard to say really. Um, Fascinating. And then, are you are you doing any any new research at the moment in it, or what's? Um, so I'm doing a bit looking. Uh, one of my undergraduate students, Emma Schofield, uh, did her dissertation project on it, uh, and she's looking at yeah the links between ASMR, misophonia, and um, different triggers to see um, because although broadly you know there's there's similar triggers so like whispering, tapping. Uh, these sorts of things uh, different people respond to different ones so we're trying to look a little bit about how um, how people respond to different kinds of triggers nice um, and actually I've got a link to that study online if you uh, oh definitely we'll sh um, yeah we'll share it uh, we'll share it yeah. uh, we'll share it after because we need some people who don't get ASMR to, to respond to it as well oh fine we'll put that out when we release the podcast yeah, and we'll great. get you some uh, respondents definitely how is it being used in advertising because this is where it starts to get really powerful right yeah this is where it's sort of gone mainstream right like yeah. the the super bowl halftime ad yeah that yeah people pay i, I read somewhere that people pay like the 39 million dollars per 30 seconds of wow. advert or something like um and the most recent super bowl uh, this beer company um made an asmr video as their advert so this like broadcast ASMR to like a huge. You know, Did they say audience. it was ASMR? Yeah. Oh, they, I yeah, just said yeah. That, yeah. So it was. It obviously looked like an ASMR video as well. Yeah. Yeah. Had, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like Nina Kravitz or someone, and it was like you know, 
doing the voice and uh, they have like the, the beer bottle kind of like rolling around the table and the sound, you know, really crisp. Um, I mean, I think with the advertising, it's tempting to be like, oh, you know, maybe when you're getting ASMR and you're getting all these pleasurable tingles, it puts you into some kind of <laughs> hypnotic state where you're dead susceptible to buying <laughs> yeah. beer or adverts. But I, I really think it's more just to do with, you know, they're, com- they're so different to the kind of classic adverts that are really, you know, loud and exciting and brash that people find them interesting and want to watch them. And the other clever thing is that, you know, people seek out videos to trigger their ASMR but they're not particularly seeking them out for the, the particular content in them it's just it triggers your ASMR yeah, yeah so like that Bob Ross example right they're not watching it because they like shows about painting they're watching it to trigger their ASMR so it means if you make an advert of it you're going to get loads of people watching it not because they're interested in beer or adverts but because they just want to get ASMR from it yeah um, but then they'll buy the beer as well. Well, I mean, if I guess if you're watching the advert, you probably seep into the subconscious into it. that it yeah. exists. But will you stuff. also feel like more of an emotional attachment, do you think, to something that has made you feel really nice and tingly I mean, it's and a, yeah, relaxed? Yeah, it's a pleasurable you yeah. know, sensation, so it might, well, we'll do that. And, I mean, the other thing is that, um, you know, when you normally like watching an advert on your phone or whatever, you know, you're doing your best to kind of, skip it as soon as it comes on yeah. and you're not really paying attention to it um, but when you watch when people watch ASMR videos you know they, they want to get really engrossed in it they put their you know best headphones on sort of sit in a quiet room and pay oh, wow. really close really? attention yeah. to the video um, and that's like an advertiser's dream right you know oh, for like- people to spend that much attention on their advert massively and there's an example, it's like the Ikea did an ASMR advert as well, which is like 30 minutes long. 30 minutes? Yeah. I, didn't, I haven't even seen this. Either. Yeah. And people are watching this 30 minute video to get ASMR and it's like a 30 minute long <laughs> advert for Ikea. I mean, they're going to be watching it in their Ikea couch with the Ikea pillows. Yeah. And and the, 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 the girl doing the voiceover in that is like, you know, oh, you know, feel this, you know, lovely, soft. Um, you know, sheet or duvet cover from IKEA, like only twenty nine ninety nine. But people, obviously, like you know, for for uh, the advertising company to get people to sit down for half an hour and watch essentially an advert is is. But also, it must be. I, I don't know if you ever, anyone has a stats, but it must be so many people watching these videos to make it worth their while paying to do a thirty minute. Yeah, definitely advert. Yeah. I mean, crazy. Yeah. And, and some of the videos have got, you know, millions of views and the yeah. top ASMR artists have got, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Wow. And, and the you know, the best ones are like uh, like YouTube celebrities, really. That's their full-time There's job. a lady, I can't remember what her name is. The one, the, um, uh, Whispers just, Red. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah, we met her. I think she used to sort of work in a, a law firm or something, or PR or something. Oh, uh, right. Started making these videos and then... You know they're so popular, and she, she can make enough money out of advertising on them that um, there's a full day job. job now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's got a little studio and oh, wow. garden, and she English. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow, no, it's so powerful. I mean, also with with uh, like Facebook and all these things, um, with facial recognition and stuff, they can they, they're probably doing it now, but we're starting more to is to read your emotions and how you emotionally mm. respond to yeah. whatever it might be that you're looking at. And then along with the ASMR and, I mean, all these things are just... Yeah. I mean, you've got no hope. <laughs> and if it becomes, you know, the, I guess it's, it is so popular that the, the, you know, the commercial side of it as well is only likely to grow. Like I heard that, um, you know, some company was like making headphones particularly for use when you're watching ASMR videos, you know, because there's an audience out there who would buy that probably. Yeah. So. Do, you, do you feel then as... If someone's using ASMR or getting ASMR specifically because they've uh, they're using it for to cure insomnia and all this kind of stuff, but then you have you know, companies exploiting the fact that they know you get this feeling. Yeah. When does that marry up, or is it kind of bad taste a little bit? I guess it's like a 
inevitable consequence of the capitalist <laughs> society though isn't it like yeah probably. from what i've heard you know from you know interviews with asmr artists like the people who make the videos they're sort of you know always resigned to it and say well you know i guess if it I guess at the end of the day, they can still go on making the videos for free um, and making money off it through advertising. Yeah, we well, can watch YouTube. The stuff free. goes on around you, and you can't stop it. So yeah, no true. Um, you know, with with the adverts, for instance, um, you know, they, they're not exactly competing with with them because people's triggers are so kind of idiosyncratic themselves. Is that you know, even if you're sort of a young ASMR artist making these videos on a budget in your bedroom, you might there might be some people who find your particular videos the most triggering and so would watch them even if there's like a company producing, you know, million pound budget great ASMR videos there. Yeah, so. yeah, that's no, true. Is there anyone that if anyone anyone for people to speak to for more information on like how how it's working for them and Well, um because they just—it feels like they stumble across it just to help yeah. there. Nothing else has worked, the, the, and they've. I guess like the the um, the main way that it sort of grows in the the ASMR community, if you want to call it that, uh, the biggest one I know of is on Reddit. So there's, yeah. a, there's an ASMR Reddit where uh, okay. people post, um, you know, their favorite videos, um, but also you know do discussions about it as well. So I take yeah. people to check out there. And I think once you found a sort of particular, um, you know, if there's a particular trigger that triggers your ASMR, the ASMR Reddit's quite good because people would tag their videos with the different triggers. Uh, okay. Like, oh, this one's a tapping one, or this one's, yeah. a, you know, something else. So. Have they been useful for you for your research? Are they getting involved? In- yeah. So we've recruited a lot of sort of ASMR people from from Reddit and from those kind of. I think there's probably some like Facebook groups as well where people talk about it and share yeah, videos. Yeah. So. yeah. And what do you think the future directions or uses will be for ASMR? Uh, so, I mean, it seems to... Def- I think definitely, like, the commercial side of it will will grow, sort of inevitably, if there's if there's money to be made out of it. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but I think, you know, the, looking into the, the, the sort of therapeutic aspects of it is going to be really interesting. Um and you know you don't want to overblow anything at the minute because the research is obviously in an early stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't want to go making any grand claims that it's going <laughs> to cure your depression or whatever. But yeah, yeah. You know, I would say that if people are, you know, haven't explored ASMR at all yet, um, you know, why not? Like, give it a go. Search for some videos. If you know that you, if you if you are listening to this and you're sort of thinking, oh, I, you know. I kind of sometimes get a feeling that's a bit like that, but I'm not sure if it's ASMR or not. You know, go on YouTube and have a look at some different kinds of videos and see if there is one or a certain type of one that does trigger it. And if it does, you know, help you relax or whatever, then, as I said, like it's healthier than a lot of other ways that people... Relax, well, if you don't so. have to take any drugs, I mean, yeah. for sure. Um, and tell me, mate, som- insomnia, depression, yeah, anxiety. anxiety, relaxing and... yeah. So, um, so yeah. Do you think the health? Do you think the health kind of route, commercial and all these health aspects, it will start to? I'd, I'd be interested to see it. Like you can just you just look at the way that um, you know mindfulness yeah. is, is yeah. sort of blown up as a thing, right? Like ten, well, yeah, probably ten, fifteen years ago, meditation in general was sort of a bit of a kooky hippie. Yeah, thing, yeah. and now it's mindfulness is basically like you know, standard. Then yeah, no, huge, you know, and the apps and everything for it. So I can I could sort of see ASMR kind of going the same way as that. I guess. So kind of alternative so. medicine. Yeah, maybe breaking into mainstream. Maybe your GP will uh, forward some links for you. <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah, it's hard to say, really. Interesting. And then, and what about just last thing on on like funding for research? Are you, yeah. are you finding commercial? businesses or companies are starting to be interested in so i know if a few a few people have researchers into asmr have kind of been approached by companies who want to know more about the triggers and how you know how to make asmr videos um i think that you know the academic funding for it that's something that we would hopefully start to see in the next few years because 
but it's difficult because you know the funders don't want to fund something too off the wall because essentially most scientific research is funded by you know the government and the taxpayers indirectly so yeah yeah they don't want to throw it at some kooky crazy alternative thing and, and then it turns out to be to be rubbish so so once you've got to publish a certain amount of papers i guess they just like has, yeah once there's this kind of critical mass of stuff suggesting look even if we don't know if this 100 percent works there's enough to suggest that it's worth doing a kind of proper really well-funded well-run study to investigate it yeah. first yeah um so obviously, yeah, some, I hope that... Great, uh, no, absolutely, I hope future. it comes to you. And is anyone else in other countries doing it? Are there like pockets of... Uh... Yeah, the, I know that there's um, a couple of research groups in uh, Canada and America who published some stuff on it, and then a couple in the, the UK as well. Um, but science and sort of scientific publishing moves at such a slower pace compared to the rest of the world that... Um, no, I know, also it takes... I mean, for, for a new idea or something new like this yeah. it seems to take science and the community a long time yeah. to accept it and then to fund it and I mean I could do a whole other podcast on <laughs> science publishing if you, oh, really? if you wanted me to but, but as yeah. an example we conducted that study what four years ago probably took us a year from initially submitting the manuscript to the journal to actually seeing it in print a year? yeah which which journal did you? Um, so you published it in uh, Plus One. It's called. Okay, so it's great. like a multidisciplinary. Fine. You know. um, Why so long? Just the you know you submit it. It goes off for peer review. They yeah. come back. They say make these changes and the whole peer review process like that and the editor who takes your manuscripts and then passes it on and then coordinates everything. Essentially, they're kind of part time. And that, I guess and who's uh, peer reviewing? Just other. Other academics. From any other um, university yeah. around that would... Yeah, who've, who've got sort of, you know, I, I imagine the person who peer-reviewed Ard has some expertise in physiological measures, okay. probably, yeah. and some expertise in, um, you know, some of the sensory phenomenon. Yeah, um, and it's one person that peer reviews. Use it to, you usually have yeah. two peer reviews, yeah. yeah. We need to so. speed things up. Yeah. We well, need to get the funding so over, we need to crack on. <laughs> There's a whole load of... I mean, I think science is getting better for that, to be honest. Yeah, I think. yeah. Um, awesome. That's cool. And where can people find you if they want to get in touch and either participate in a study or find out more? Yeah, I mean... Social media? and Yeah, social media, um, at Tom Hostler on Twitter, um, or t.hostler at mmu.ac.uk. Okay. My email address. Awesome. Uh, but one thing we're hoping to sort of do in the next um, is get some funding. We're going to submit a bid to sort of start an ASMR research network. Nice. And one of the things we want to do as part of that is make a website that kind of coordinates all this information on ASMR and, and gives people the opportunity to participate in studies. And stuff, Brilliant. So. Oh, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Um, how far away are you from doing that? Uh, I think the, the, we're going to submit the funding in June, July. Okay. Probably, so. well, not far. Yeah. And, and do you have um, a Facebook group? Did you, did you mention you had a Facebook or someone else's? Um, I think there are ASMR There's Facebook other groups in general. I'm not sure yeah. in particular what they're called. Though, Fine. So. so your website will be your hub yeah, for all of the yeah. stuff and the research. And yeah. that'd be really cool. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for uh, coming in. Yeah, no problem. And next podcast on scientific publishing. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Bye.